Hello and welcome to another edition of the Market Minute. Uh, my name is Eric Odom. I'm the principal broker for ROI Commercial Property Brokerage. And today we have with us a, a great guest, uh, Patrick Montega, who is the editor and publisher for La Gaceta, which I believe is the only trilingual newspaper in the country and also the oldest minority owned newspaper in the country. You got that right. Well, I appreciate you joining us. We'll talk a little bit today about the RNC, the Republican National Committee coming to Tampa. So your role with the host committee, what, what, what exactly do you, do you serve there in terms of the host committee? Well, I, I got a call early on from Al Austin, who was the gentleman who helped bring the convention here. It was the major force behind it. And uh, he asked if I would be willing to uh, serve on the host committee. And, um, and of course, I had to have an understanding what the host committee is. And the host committee is a nonprofit group to help raise funds to uh, augment what the city and the county and the state can do in bringing the convention here. And um, since it's a nonprofit, they also have to be a, a nonpartisan group. And of course, it was very easy to find a lot of big Republicans willing to serve, but it wasn't too easy to find Democrats who were willing to serve on the host committee. So Al asked me if I would, and, and it's a good um, thing for our economy. So I said yes. Uh, so. You know, I started off as a token. Uh, they needed a, a token a, Democrat. A, they needed a Democrat. <laughs> they got a few, but I'm probably the most liberal uh, and most outspoken on the group. And um, uh, so I serve that purpose, but it, it's been more rewarding than that. I've been able to have some input that I, I think is made to hopefully convention a little better. Well, let's talk a little bit about the number of people that you're expecting. You know, I, I keep hearing we're going to have about 40,000 a day. Uh, of, of, of direct people from the convention, but I, I think that actually number is going to be higher. There's going to be a lot of people. Uh, there's going to be police that are going to be here that are going to be living here for a few days. You're going to have Secret Service. You're going to have uh, um, everything from limo drivers to bartenders to other people coming in to augment. Now the 40,000 is yet that supposedly just the convention years or is that also the ancillary groups and the and the lobbyist groups and whatnot? I, I think it's I think it's the people who are directly coming down to stay in hotels for the convention itself but like I said I think yeah I think it's you, know, you start with the convention years uh, then you uh, add to that media and um, you add to that um, um, you know the people putting on the actual convention I think that's that's where you're getting that number and you know we talked about uh, you know earlier about the um, short-term economic impact, which is obviously the, the hotels and restaurants and probably leaving some other uh, folks out there in terms of what, what would be immediate economic impact. And of course, part of the discussion, the point of sitting down with you today was to talk a little bit about the economic impact of the, of the convention. What about some of the long-term things? I understand Governor Scott has uh, some ideas of getting corporations together or CEOs. Do you, do you, can you talk, tell us a little bit about that? Well, I believe that the, the governor, along with others, are going to try and take advantage of selling Florida or selling Tampa or selling whatever you want to sell um, at this moment. You know, generally we have to go to Washington to lobby. In this case, Washington's coming to us. So uh, while Scott's going to be working on these CEOs who are in town and try and sell Florida, uh, I believe our local chamber and uh, some people locally are going to try and sell some of these politicians on needs of our community. Uh, port funding, airport funding, uh, roads, uh, uh, maybe veterans affairs issues, things like this. So I think we're all going to try and take the opportunity. Now, of course, you know, everybody coming to the convention, I think, is going to be a little busy. So I don't know how much time we're going to be able to get them to focus on, on um, what Tampa's about, what Florida's about but maybe they get a little flavor of it, maybe they come back. Gotcha, and do, do you have any idea perhaps of what that agenda might be in terms of what, what would be their top line items? Whether you know them or not, but would, I mean, in terms from Scott's point of view, what would be your point of view in terms of what are the top three or four items you think they might be able to get accomplished? Um, I think probably uh, um, the things they are hoping to get accomplished is to um, find some, hopefully, some, some money to, to help them with needed projects here. That would be the, the, the thing that I think would be the easiest to accomplish because you, you have the political infrastructure here. I think the thing that's a little bit more intangible but something that they would like to accomplish is trying to um, um, talk about incentives that the state of Florida has in bringing corporations down here or bringing uh, uh, backroom operations here or whatever um, um, the economic um, 
whatever that business has uh, and bringing them here to Florida. So I think that's going to be probably their second goal. Um, um, you know, the third goal, um, you know, is, is probably also going to be just some local politics, how to get Governor Scott reelected, how to get uh, Connie Mack uh, elected, how to get uh, uh, some of these Florida people uh, elected and continue to uh, strengthen the Republican hold on Florida. It's going to be interesting to me because the, the transportation issue of getting downtown, the logistics of getting around, if that's not going to spur some interest in trying to create some more uh, public transportation infrastructure in the city of Tampa after the, all this is said and done. You know, uh, we, we can always hope. I mean, you know, we, we've, we've had this issue come up and, and lost on it. Um, um, you know, uh, when you have an event like this, when you have an event like the Olympics, I mean, these are things that really show how woeful your transportation infrastructure is. Um, the problem is, is that we can also find this example when we have a bridge close or something very small, a concert and a, and a, and a hockey game at the same time can just ruin the whole place. So, um, um, you know, I'm sure this is going to show some of our weak points in transportation. Whether it's going to create any investment, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's um, uh, something that uh, uh, we can only hope for. Gotcha. Changing subject a little bit, let's talk a little bit about the protesters. I understand we were, I, there's, the last I heard there was 30 something permits that had been pulled for protest. Yeah, I, I, you know, I hear people like Planned Parenthood and others want to come here and, and uh, use the spotlight, use the media that's here, uh, who's going to be looking for different opinions to, to give voice to their issues. Um, I think that uh, the city's trying to find nice little places for them. I'm sure they won't do what the city wants. I'm sure they'll just <laughs> spread out and go wherever they want to and, and do their own thing. Um, um, you know, I, I think that we could have from five to 15,000 protesters. I think that uh, the vast majority of them are going to be law-abiding people. A lot of them are going to be grandmas who want to uh, talk about uh, uh, reproductive rights. Uh, a lot of them are going to be mothers and daughters. Uh, a lot of them are going to be uh, union leaders who want to talk about wage and hour kind of issues. Uh, you know, like I said, I think a vast majority of these people are going to be law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, a vast majority of them are going to be Tampa's customers. And we really need to try and market to them because frankly, they don't have a lot of parties to go to. So they're the ones who are most likely to populate the restaurants and the bars and, 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 and you know, and, and do trade there. Um, so I, I am, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm looking forward to the protesters because I think they're actually going to help provide some more economic boon to the area. I think that the police are going to be very well prepared for um, those who um, would like to do bad. And, um, and hopefully we can strike that balance to be prepared security-wise, but yet also open enough to uh, give a welcome to those who just want to come and, and, and do their march and, and let uh, the powers that be know what they want. And, and hopefully we can avoid some of the issues that we had in, in, uh, in Minneapolis um, the last time around. Yeah, it's, um, uh, you know, I think Minneapolis concentrated their police forces too much. Uh, they thought that everybody was going to follow their plan and be on the street they told them to be on. Uh, you know, where I think Minnesota, uh, what, what Minneapolis found out was that the problems happened where the police weren't, not where the police were. So this over-concentration of police didn't help them. And I hope here we spread them out a little bit further and, and, and use uh, those concentrations of police only where you need them and when you need them. Well, there's a lot of folks. I mean, when you start talking about 40,000 convention years, the additional uh, police, maybe 15,000 protesters. I mean, you're moving probably close to 70,000 additional people you're going to be dumping in that very small, very small area. Yes, and, uh, and then we're going to start doing road closures, and they'll be rolling around, and we're going to change them. So, you know, you might have the Crosstown closed, or, or you know, when Romney drives from the airport to the, to the uh, convention center, we're going to be closing roads along the way. So, you know, it'll be a, a good time to uh, keep your head up, and uh, hopefully, uh, and I think the city's talked about this, coming up with some sort of social media to be able to inform people uh, kind of on the spot of where uh, road closure is going to happen, uh, you know, the times they're going to open and, and close and things like that. So I think that's what's going to be necessary to make this place flow w well. It, you, you had made a comment to me before the interview about the local short-term economic impact that really is starting to happen now, right? You know, a lot of people were frustrated early on. They, they thought that um, they were going to put their name in, in the bucket, and in January, February, and March, 
uh, somebody was going to call them and they were going to get a firm contract to do A, B, or C. And what I think people are finding out is that a lot of this stuff is happening at the last minute. While the Republican convention might know what it's doing inside the ice palace and who's going to do the staging, who's going to do, do the lighting, I think that all the ancillary parties uh, that are happening are being planned right now. I'm with the Cuban Club. Um, I'm on the foundation that owns that building. And we're currently negotiating with five different groups that want to rent it over five different days. And there's still not a firm signed contract with anybody. We're wow. still working it out. And that means that there's still opportunities for uh, food vendors. There's still opportunities for lighting people. There's still opportunities uh, even for, you know, people to be janitors and people to, to serve liquor. All those opportunities are still existing. You know, we haven't even placed a liquor order yet. And, and that means that Southern Wine and, and those other groups that sell liquor are going to be busy and have to put extra people uh, on their trucks to get their stuff delivered. So I think that, that that if you haven't got a contract yet or you haven't seen any dollars yet from the convention, I think that right now is the time to really get out there and push hard because I think there are opportunities more today than there were two, two or three months ago. And for the local vendors, I, I, there's websites and whatnot that are created for people to go to. Is there any other way that you might suggest for local vendors to, to stick their nose in there? By reaching out to uh, network with businesses that are doing stuff with the convention. Um, you know, I would talk to hotels. Uh, I would talk to, um, um, you know, places like the Cuban Club or, or the Italian Club or others that, that are, are rental places uh, to call up um, limo companies, cab companies, and things like that. See if there's some things that uh, they're going to need, extra supplies, extra people to help them. Um, or if you have some sort of additional service that, that might work out well, you know, try and sell it through somebody else. Gotcha. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about in terms of maybe special interest that people might not know? Well, I think that a lot of people are, are kind of fearful of the convention. They're worried about, you know, mass violence. They're worried about, you know, gridlock and things like this. And, and, and I'm not saying none of that's going to happen except for the mass violence. We, we won't predict it and I don't think it'll happen. But I think that um, we should embrace uh, this event. It'll be neat. Uh, we'll see a lot of uh, big names on the streets. Um, uh, we'll see a lot of weird things happening, uh, weird people. There'll be art shows that are based on politics. Uh, I, I heard of uh, this one group from New York coming down. They want to do a giant ice sculpture uh, that spells out the middle class, and then they're going to put it on the street and watch it melt and hope people <laughs> take pictures with it, you know, the melting middle class. You're going to have all these kinds of things happening and, and weird things going on. And I think it'll be fun. I, I, you know, I think that our local community should embrace it. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because there's been a lot of discussion of, of businesses shutting down and, and, uh, and boarding up the buildings downtown and whatnot. It sounds like you're advocating just the opposite. Let's, let's just bask in the glory that is Tampa for the RNC. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, um, is it going to be normal? Is it going to be easy? No, but, you know, um, this area deals with everything with tropical storms and opening up a business when it's raining and pouring and is not easy. And, and we deal with a lot of things that aren't easy down here. We have Super Bowls. We've had other things. I don't think this is an impossible event to deal with. Uh, I think you just have to have a little patience and you have to be willing to kind of change, change up a little bit. If, uh, if it's bad one day, doesn't mean it's going to be bad the next. Patrick, just like to tell you how much I appreciate you joining us today. Very insightful um, uh, information on the, on the RNC, and we're looking forward to see how this whole thing rolls out for, for Tampa. Well, I'm so glad you're interested in trying to inform people uh, about what's happening, and uh, uh, thank you for you know, choosing me. I'm, um, I, I think the RNC is going to be great for all of us, and, uh, and even as a Democrat, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, there you go. The, the token Democrat has spoken <laughs> on the RNC, and we're excited about what this holds for Tampa in the future.